The Champion of Cyrodiil is the greatest protagonist in The Elder Scrolls. I don't claim that the Champion is more powerful than either the likes of the Nerevarine or the Dragonborn, but I do still think that they embody the most what it means to be a paragon of good in what can often be an unjust and evil world. I think this for a number of reasons, but mostly it's because the Champion of Cyrodiil was never destined to be anything special. The Dragonborn, the the Nerevarine, both of these heroes were prophesized, and that doesn't demean them at all, but the fact that the hero of Oblivion was, by all accounts, a normal person who happened to be in a cell at the right time only adds to the sense that he or she was a true hero, a normal person who just did good things. They didn't have to do anything, they didn't fit into some sort of prophecy. I mean, it's even arguable that the hero of Kavach isn't even the real hero of Oblivion anyway. You could interpret it as being Martin Septim, the emperor who sacrificed himself to save none. You could argue as well that the hero of Oblivion was somewhat destined. Uriel Septim himself talks about having witnessed the prisoner in his dreams. There's a suggestion that divine intervention had placed the hero there, but this isn't confirmed at all. It's a mere suggestion. By contrast, both the Nerevarine and the Dragonborn are certified fulfillers of their respective prophecies. As far as we know, the Champion of Cyrodiil was a mere cog in a wheel. So it's safe to say that, in essence, the Champion is no one special. They were not born to be a hero. All the adventures they partook in and the experiences they endured to relight the dragon fires were voluntary. They weren't following a document or a mural that told them what to do. They genuinely just wanted to save the world in the face of annihilation. I think the thing that stands out to me is that the prisoner from the dungeons of the Imperial City made him or herself into something legendary. They were always concerned with the well-being of other people, from throwing himself or her herself into an oblivion gate at Kavach to battling Mankar Cameron in his hell-like plane of oblivion. All they did was for the good of other people. It's safe to say that they acted out of a sense of altruism. I think this is emphasised by the fact that Martin Septim, as the Emperor, took the mantle of public saviour. The hero of Kavach was merely the heroic sidekick. They would never be named posthumously in books. The hero of Kavach, through a series of arbitrary events and coincidences, became the hero that Tamriel needed to defeat Dagon and to close shut the jaws of oblivion. But you could easily say that the Nereverine and the Dragonborn, and I focus on these two because they're the heroes I have the most personal experience playing as, are very similar to the hero of Kavach. The Dragonborn has to embark on a massive journey to fulfil his development and face Alduin, which is no mean feat, and he developed massively along the way. However, the Dragonborn has little choice in the matter. From the very beginning, he is identified as the antithesis of Alduin. The rigidity of the prophecy dictates that he will face the dragon one way or another. He was born a great man, and the only one who could realistically face the child of Akatosh. And it is this last point that means he can never be as good a hero as the one of Cyrodiil. The Dragonborn was born to be a hero. The prisoner from the Imperial City made themselves a hero. In a similar way, the Nereverine was born to fulfil the Nereverine prophecy. Although they did not have nearly as much latent power as the Dragonborn, they were still born to fulfil an archetype. There's also another point I'd like to bring up that only makes the hero of Kavar more interesting. The fact that, perhaps following the Shivering Isles questline, they become the Dajic Prince Sherograth. I won't go into detail about that here because it's pretty complicated and it's definitely not confirmed, but I think that it's poetic that the protagonist went from being a low-life criminal to perhaps being a Daedric Prince. I know that there are going to be those people who claim that I'm talking out of my ass and that my view is tarnished with nostalgia, but maybe it is, and that's fine. Because in the end, what I love about these games is that you have to engage with them. It's not enough to simply play the game. You have to get into the mindset that you are the Nerevarine or the Dragonborn or the hero of Kavach. And I suppose that a lot of my admiration for the Champion of Cyrodiil stems from the fact that when I was younger I absolutely immersed myself in the game as the same
saviour of Nern. Either way, my interpretation stands. The champion of Cyrodiil, the hero of Kavach, the Grey Fox, the Archmage of the Mages Guild, Sheogorath, whatever you want to call him, is the greatest hero in the Elder Scrolls. Thanks for watching this video, please do leave your own interpretation in the comments section below if you want to. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.